21. We've been talking about a call, the commitment. I think we've been doing this for the last four months, and um, I want to break off. We're going to still talk about the call, the commitment, but today I want to talk about the exchange. The exchange. As I mentioned, we're going to receive communion in just a minute, but I want to talk about the exchange. What happened? What, what happened? Well, there was an exchange when Jesus died, was buried, and resurrection, uh, resurrected. There was an exchange that took place. And I think that I, I have this one truth here that I kind of want to major on. And I think it can really make a difference in our life. I want to open it up like this because how many know God is not mad at you? Amen. God is not mad at you. He doesn't have an end for you. He's not, he's not going to destroy you. God doesn't curse you. None of that. He doesn't pour wrath out on you. He doesn't have any left. You know why? You can go to the head of the class, bro. <laughs> That's exactly right. He put all his wrath out on Jesus. See, people say, well, the Lord made me sick to teach me something. God doesn't have any more sickness to teach you. Because all the sickness that all humanity would deal with and have to suffer from, he poured it out on Jesus on that cross. All of it. That's why the Bible said he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his strife we're healed. So Jesus was our substitute. Every, every penalty, every curse. That's why the Bible said he became a curse for a curse is he who hangs on a tree. He was cursed so you wouldn't have to be. He was, he was, he was sick so you wouldn't have to be. Jesus even said this one time. He said, why have you forsaken me? Because God turned his back on him. That was the only time he turned his back on him. And, and he said, why did you forsake me? And, and when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, can, is there any way you can do this? Because you're about to separate from me. I'm about to be on my own. And the devil going to be able to attack me any way he wants to. But he said, nevertheless. And that was all in exchange so you can be whole. So you will not have to deal with a curse. So you can have authority over the devil. So that you can be whole. So that you can recover from anything. So that you can overcome. That's what he did for us. That's why we say, thank you, Jesus. That's why we praise him. That's why we worship him. Because he's good like that. I get, I, I get messed up every time I start thinking about that. Because, you know, before, you know, you go to church, but when you realize, you no, know, he bore this for me so that I wouldn't have to. He endured that so I wouldn't have to. God. God is good. When? All the time. Okay. And so, and so what I want to do, I want to share with you a couple of things because to help you tap into that and not just tap into it, to live in it. Because Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it what? More abundantly. I like to amplify it, says, in abundance to the full till it overflows. God is good, and he wants us to live the good life. Because Jesus, now watch this, you don't deserve none of it. You don't deserve any of it. You're not good enough. That's why we say, okay, okay, when I, like, when I, when I get to the point when I say, that's why we say, <laughs> you're supposed to say, thank you, Jesus. So that's why we say, thank you, Jesus. All right. You in 1 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians, that's a good place because that's where we're going to start. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, now I'm going to get into this. Now, now what I'm about to teach you, this is when this, this, this Jesus thing and this Bible thing and this blessing thing started working for me when I understood what I'm about to teach you. And, and maybe it'll help you understand why, why I am like I am too. To, to. Verse 21 says, for he, who, for he made him to, who knew no sin. Who was that? Jesus. Jesus. To be what? Sin. To be sin for who? Us. Not for him, for us. God didn't even do this for himself. Right. He did this for who? Because us. us needed some savior. Yeah. Watch this. That we might become, oh, might become the what? Righteous. Of God in him. So God made him to be sin so we can be made righteous. Jesus made sin so we can made, be made righteous. Jesus to be made sin so we can be made righteous. See, we can never ever obtain righteousness by being good. We can never ever be made righteous by being good. 
there's no behavior on the planet. I mean, we can pray, you know, we can become a monk, we can become a nun, we can pray, but none of that will make us righteous. Praying, sacrifices, all of that, giving, tithing, none of that makes us righteous. Um, there's nothing we can do to become righteous. We have to be made righteous. And we can only be made righteous when there's an exchange because somebody got to pay for sin. That's the way to look. Somebody got to pay for some sin. And Jesus said, I'll do that. I'll do it so that they can be made righteous. We didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. That's why, that's why we can't think we're better than anybody else. All of us were sinners who needed a savior. And we had to be made righteous. You're not born righteous. Well, when you're born again, you are. But nobody can sprinkle you and you be righteous. No, no pun intended. Run, run to Romans chapter 5, please. So we're going to receive communion here in a little while. And when we do, I really believe something's going to be marked in your mind. Now, we're in Romans chapter 5, right? Now, we're talking about this righteousness. Now, Jesus became sin. He didn't sin, but he became sin. There was an exchange. Everybody say an exchange. Okay, watch this. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, having been justified... By faith. Now that means declared righteous. If some other translation declared righteous or acquitted. Um, therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom we also have access by faith. Into this grace in which we stand. <laughs> so we can stand in this grace y'all. It's good. And rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So justified, acquitted, declared righteous, just as if I didn't do anything wrong. Now, how many of you are here today, you are, you know that you've been born again? Okay. Now, did you realize that God looked at you and all that crazy stuff you and I did and all that stuff, and, you know, we did, that God doesn't even see that? God said, your sins and iniquity, I will remember them what? No more. So, only time God thinks about it when you bring it up because he said I'm, I'm done with it but he said you've been declared righteous it's like somebody being um, on trial for a crime and uh, you know they do the crime thing I mean the, the, the court thing and then the jury comes back they go deliberate they come back with a verdict and they said we find the defendant let me do this <laughs> this is my flow no, I'm playing. I'm like, yeah, y'all can help me out. So they, we, we, Your Honor, we find the defendant not guilty. Now that means all that stuff they said, all that stuff in the courtroom, all that stuff they said, it means nothing because right now the verdict has been issued, right. not guilty. No time, no parole, no nothing. It's like, watch it. It's like it never happened. Yeah. Well, that's what Jesus did for us. Amen. He and see, we've been declared righteous. So the judge, the judge says, and then he declares, not guilty. Well, when Jesus died and, and settled the claims of justice, God looked at you and looked at me. We weren't physically here, but he, he sees everything. And he said, not guilty. None of us. Are guilty. We've been declared righteous. But I want you to look, look, look at the first verse again. Therefore, having been justified or declared righteous by what? Faith. By what? Faith. By faith. I didn't have to be at church 15 days a week. I didn't have to not smoke a joint for two months. Okay, now, this is so key to this Bible becoming real to you. Because, see, I'm only acquitted or justified by faith, not by my works, not by what I do. I'm made right with God by faith, not by what I do. There's nothing I can do to make me right with God. There's no behavior I can do to make me right with God. I'm made right with God. What? By faith. So it's what I believe. That's what uh, Dr. White was talking about all weekend. He said what you believe, your behavior is determined by what you believe. 
See, if you really believe something, you don't have to worry about, if you really believe, you really believe, you don't have to, ah, oh, I better do this. No, it just comes out of you, doesn't it? See, see, now, now, here's where I'm going to get into the meat of this because, see, a lot of people believe things. Well, a lot of people focus on, well, if I can just stay right, if I can just stay right. No, see, when you, when you say, if you believe you are who God says you are, your right comes out. Amen. Now, how did you get saved, according to this? By faith. By faith. By faith. It's what I believe, right? right? Okay, okay. So what can unravel your righteousness? Okay, let me ask you this. So, what if you just sit there and cuss somebody out and you slap them and you throw something? Would that unravel your righteousness? Huh? Why? Okay, now, if, if I believe, if what I believe is what gets me into righteousness, what I do, not, what I did didn't get me there. So, what I do is not going to take me out of there. Right? Now, I told the first crew, I said, there's going to be a lot of folks in heaven. And when we get there, we'll be like, how do you get up here? <laughs> like, I'm like, babe, like, who's here? <laughs> I'm serious. Because, see, 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 we forget something. See, you, now, you see this like, well, no, I, I get in by what I believe, not by what I do. Now, there's some things I'm going to do because I believe, but I don't get in because of what I do. You got it? Okay, now, I got to clean something up, though, because cause I know some people are like, hey, hey, I could just keep on doing this. Well, no. Right? No, it's right. <laughs> but it's what I believe. Now, watch this. So, cause, and you always have, I always have to do this only because some people think and, and haven't heard like this. See, sin, say sin. Sin. Sin, see, stuff don't start going wrong and God doesn't start punishing you and stuff start going wrong because you sin. Stuff start going wrong, but it ain't God. <laughs> sin will cause stuff to go wrong in your life. Well, I thought you just said, I, didn't, I ain't talking about your salvation, I'm talking about your life. Sin will cause you to get to heaven quicker. Much quicker. Way before your time. Sin doesn't affect your, 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 your righteousness, because that's something that happened in your spirit. But what sin does is, it, it, gives, it gives the devil direct access into your life. It'll just, you'll, you'll spend your life full of sickness and disease. It'll, it'll give you God, it'll get God, it'll give the devil uh, the uh, express lane to attack your children anytime he wants to. Any way he wants to. He'll, he'll, it'll give him an express lane to attack your finance. You're always struggling, can't ever get ahead. See, sin doesn't unravel your righteousness because you, that's by what you believe, but it can unravel your life. Yeah, and it's not God. Sin has natural consequences. <laughs> okay. Sin causes you not to have confidence toward God because sin releases something called condemnation. Condemnation is like cancer of the spirit. See, there's a lot of folks that say, and they're going to be to heaven. We're going to be surprised. They made it because they never denounced Jesus but their life was miserable pitiful not an example of everything God died for and I'm gonna show you today how to, how to tap into that but that's what sinner do some some people spend their life rest of their life in prison with their saved self because sin has natural consequences Condemnation of the spirit. You, you can't even pray. I can't even pray and get the devil off my wife if I'm in sin because condemnation is shutting me down. I have no confidence toward my, toward, toward my prayer. I don't even want to approach God. 
You understand? But I'm saved. Because <laughs> I didn't denounce. Now you say, well, how can you say? No, no, I got to denounce Jesus. I don't want a thing to do with you, Jesus. I'm done with you. To hell. To hell, Jesus. To hell. Now I'll probably go to hell. But I felt like, man, because see, some of you in here tonight, today, you're like, oh, man, I thought, I thought, I thought, man, I must not be saved. No, you say you just haven't mortified the deeds of the flesh yet. You haven't, you haven't worked that salvation out to where it comes to your soul and now it's coming to your body and it's stopping stuff. Or you haven't believed what I'm about to preach you, teach you. See, when you know you're righteous, you don't even have to, I mean, we didn't go to no detox. We never even been, been married constantly. We probably needed some. <laughs> but we didn't. But we had. <laughs> she probably needed some. I was good. <laughs> she needed some. But no. But here, but here, I'm gonna show you because see, see when you're righteous, see when you know who you are, you know what you deserve. Yes. And see, and when you believe, like he talked, when you believe something, your behavior follows it. So a lot of people really now some people probably think they say that they're not because they haven't really believed on Jesus. They may have repeated somebody's prayer that somebody told them to say. And that's between them and God, because I don't know what you believe in your heart. You can repeat something like Polly. But so I don't know what you believe. And so that's why, that's why we got to teach this thing, man. And I guarantee you, a lot of them folks out there that won't come to church, if they knew what I'm talking about, there well, one came today. <laughs> I love you. Who's that? I ain't giving you no more. <laughs> Girl, you, you ain't right. You ain't right. <laughs> ah, that was for the month. That would last for the month. Some, if you weren't here last week, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. So, so it's faith in what Jesus did that we believe in that caused us to be what God said, you are righteous. Now, God declared you righteous. So I don't care what they call you. I don't care what they say about you. God declared me righteous. You can call me whatever you want to call me. I'm going to go with what God said. Amen. He has more experience than you. Okay. Now, I want you, because we're going to receive communion in, in a little bit. So... <laughs> So, I'm righteous, right? All right? I've been declared righteous. Um, um, mm. I'm righteous. I believe I'm righteous. So now what's going to happen? If I believe something, I'm going to act it out, right? Anybody ever have a favorite cartoon character when they were young and you believed? Did you think you were Superman trying to jump out windows? <laughs> anybody, anybody put a cape on, put a towel on, and you run around the house? And you woke up to that pretty soon, though. <laughs> okay, you didn't believe that anymore. But at one point, you believed it. You thought you could fly. Mm -hmm. Now, he says here, uh, are we in Romans 5.17? Did we read that? Okay, let's read that first. Romans 5.17. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, he's talking about Adam's mess up, much more, much more those who receive, everybody say receive, receive. the abundance of grace and of the, everybody say gift. What is it? Yes. What is it? Yes. So this is not something. Do you earn a gift? No. Do you deserve a gift? No. Why did you get a gift? Okay, what well, says here? He who received. See, this thing, this thing, this righteousness has to be given to us. So God gave this to me now. See, and this it's appeared to everybody. But I got to receive it though. If I don't receive it, it doesn't benefit me, but, but it's a gift. So I, can't, I just want to drill the point home. I cannot 
earn this thing. It's something I receive, and it's something that God has given me. I don't deserve it. I can't work for it. I can't pay for it. It's a gift. And God has said, friendly, because you accepted what Jesus did, because you took the exchange, you are just like my son now, because the Bible says we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. Whatever Jesus got from God, we got from God. Whatever he can get from God, we can get from God. The work, whatever I do, you can do. Didn't he say it? So we're heirs of God. So guess who I am now? Guess who you are? I'm an heir of God. I believe that. And so because I do that, I don't, sin is not a problem for me. Listen, I don't get, I don't have withdrawals. Why? I'm an heir of God. I'm a child of God. And furthermore, now, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk around and help somebody's world, make, make somebody's world better. Why? Because I'm, there's something in me that just don't want to see people suffer. Because I believe I'm the salt of the earth. So I'm going to help preserve somebody. I'm going to help somebody avoid some misfortune in their life. Why? Because I'm a child of God now. I'm not going to criticize people like I used to. I used to be, I used to criticize folk, man, talk about folk. You know, I know I'm the only one in here ever did that. But, but I said, you know, righteous people, people of God don't talk about people. Because I'm righteous now, I'm going to pray instead of criticize. I'm going to build up instead of tear down. It's no problem. We haven't had an argument. I think going on two and a half years, three, something like that. Now we we quit counting because righteous people don't argue. Amen. How many of y'all ever seen the the Queen of England? You ever you ever seen her? And and you know she, I saw her one time. I was over there. But anyway, I never saw her. You know how you you know you don't get that close. <coughs> but I never saw her like. <laughs> You don't see, see, queens don't do that. They don't fuss. They don't trip over what folk do. They just like. <laughs> and how that wave go? They don't even do that. She don't do that for real. I, I didn't see her do it. And they don't, they don't even raise their voice. They say, oh. Uh, Take his head off for me, okay? <laughs> now, why you say that? Watch this. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look For by one man's offering, death reigns through the one. Much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will do what? Rain. Will do what? Reign. And Amplify said reign as king. Reign as a king. Kings don't do that kind of stuff. Hallelujah. So you know what else? Ain't no devil gonna come in my house and disrupt my peace. Because I'm the righteousness of God. Because God said, that's why God said, my grace is sufficient. He said, I don't need to come. I'm not, don't ask me to come to your house and fix it. I've given you the authority. You just like Jesus, you fix it. I reign in life now. Because of, this, because of what he's given me. See, I'm righteous, not because of what I do. I'm righteous now. See, this is the righteousness of God. I'm, to God, I look just like Jesus. I'll tell you something else. To the devil, I look just like Jesus. Because I got on the, the breastplate of righteousness mm -hmm. and the helmet of salvation. And I'm walking like Jesus. <laughs> so I got all his armor on. He don't know. He said, I seen that walk before. I heard them words before. I'm not going to mess with him anymore. I, I, I messed I mess with him one time too much. And he just wiped me out. So I'm not going to let just let him walk by. He talking about me. I, who else is he talking about? Okay, I just thought I asked. Okay, so, so when you understand the righteousness of God, when you understand the righteousness of God, now is when you can take advantage of your inheritance. God has given us everything. A rich, rich life and inheritance. Well, Pastor, you mean I'm not going to have no problem? No, you're going to have more problems than you would ever shake a stick at. Trying to talk you out of your righteousness. But you just stand your ground. And then they come to the point where you're like, okay, I know what this is all about. Now, I want to show you how to get your righteousness. Go to uh, Matthew chapter 6, please. The instant you know that you're righteousness of God, you can come boldly to the throne. 
I said boldly to the throne. Yes. Now, let me show you what he exchanged you. Glory to God. Now, this is good news right here. Okay, well, that's good news to me. Um, he became sin. We just read it so that we become righteous. He was punished so we can be forgiven. He was wounded so we can be healed. He was cursed so we can be blessed. He was rejected so we can be accepted. He became poor so that we can have abundance. The old man was crucified so that the new man can live. See, that old man got to die. The Bible says you mortify the deeds of the flesh. God's not going to kill that man. You got to kill him. I said, you got to kill that old man. See, some of the stuff that's like, well, I thought I would say that's still happening. That old man hadn't been mortified, hadn't been killed yet so that the new man can come forth. But you have the power to crucify the flesh and to kill that old man. Hallelujah. You're in Matthew chapter 6. All right, look at verse 31. <sighs> Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going for lunch? What shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles seek, people without a relationship with God. That's what Jesus was talking about. He said, all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But seek first the kingdom of God. And what else? Oh. So so I got to come after this. I got to I got to do I got to deal with this righteousness thing. So if I don't seek first the kingdom and seek his righteousness, I may be um, at a disadvantage about some stuff. Hmm. Okay, give me the Amplified on that. Say 33, please. He says, seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. Now, I've, I've been reading this scripture. I think the first scripture I ever put on my car was 633, you know, way back in 1982. And, uh, you know, the Bible was pregnant. And it's always giving birth to new babies of revelation. But first of all, Jesus said this. He said, the things that people seek after. Now, if you take an inventory of what's number one on people's mind. He said, where, what you're going to wear, what we're going to eat, all that. Provision. That's the number one thing on folks' mind. How are we going to do this? If I do this, if I, how are we going to do this? If I take this job, how's this going to happen? If I move here, how's this going to happen? We, 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 and he said, people, he said, don't worry about that stuff. Don't worry about that. So, so the Gentiles are people that don't have a relationship with God. Now, he said, his people, we're not supposed to be caught up in this. But he said, the world is always, always pressing and stressing and worrying about what's going to happen next. But he said, People that don't have a relationship with God, I guess they got to do the best they can. But these are the people that you're always going to have, always going to have some anxiety or some worry or fretting. People who don't know God or people who don't know that they're righteous. And so he said, they do this. But he said, but here's what my people do to alleviate them from having to worry about anything. What is that, Jesus? And... Here, how many you know, how many you know, the Bible said God richly gives us, how many things? All, All things to enjoy. So he, everything that pertains to our life, everything pertaining to our living godly, everything that pertains to us being whole, living a productive life, everything that, that pertains to household salvation. How many know God wants everybody in your house saved? Yeah, household salvation. He wants you to live a long and, and healthy life. He wants you to be in the right place at the right time. He don't want you to be in any dead-end job. He wants you to be producing. He wants you to be uh, affecting lives and causing people to understand that there's a God somewhere who sits high, but he looks low, and he ministers in the life of people. He wants us to do that. He wants people to look at our life and see how good God is. 
That's what this is all about. He wants us to be the salt of the earth. Well, he, and he gives us inheritance. He tells us, he said, in Abraham, um, Abraham, he said, those who are of faith are blessed with blessed Abraham. Did you know Abraham was blessed? You had to go to Genesis 24, 1. Don't go in the Bible, but on your own time. And he said that Abraham was blessed in every way. And if you check it out, you know, physically, financially, his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, down to generations. And if Abraham was considered, Abraham wasn't, it? the Bible said Abraham was declared righteous just like we are. Because of him believing not because of what he did. We looked at this several months ago. Abraham did a lot of stuff wrong. A lot of stuff wrong. Moses did a bunch of stuff wrong. But it was what they believed. Now let's unwrap this because this is really simple. Really simple. See, he first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now all my brothers and sisters that love God that love the Lord, I'm giving you a key now to opening up the treasures that God has laid up. Psalm 84, 11 says, no good thing will I withhold from them that walk uprightly before me. God has already laid it up. This is how you unlay it. First of all, you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. When do you seek the kingdom? First. When? First. Wow. Well, so, he says, seek his first. So God is saying, what you need to do is give me and my word priority over everything else in your life. That's why he said first. <laughs> he says, seek first the king. Understand, he said, you need to understand my way of doing and being. And I have to seek. Okay, how does this kingdom work? Because the Bible says I've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. So I'm in a whole different government. How does this work? How does this work? And I, I used the illustration this morning about um, even the order of our service. See, the reason why kingdom, the reason why, you know, we come in here and we, and we praise God first, because the Bible said enter into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with singing. So this is not just so people, and I can't, you know, and uh, I, won't, I won't tell them what I said the first sermon. But, but, but so it's not just so people can take time to get here and leave the house at 11 and get here by 11.15, knowing that the preaching didn't start yet. It's designed, it's the order of the kingdom. See, if you want anything from God, the order of the kingdom is to come into his presence with thanksgiving. Coming to his courts with praise and blessing his name and magnifying his name. And you know why you do that? Because the Bible says he inhabits the praises. But it also says this, that our praise silenced the enemy, shut him down in my life. He can't even talk to me, torment me, or disrupt me. Why? I'm shutting him down. Now, you know why that's important? Because the word of God about to come forth. Because some truth about to come forth. And this truth, one word from God can one word from God. I don't, it may be in the offering. It could be an announcement. It could be somewhere. But one word. See, now I'm open. But see, if I didn't open my mouth during praise service, I'm going to have to hope, hope, hope I get something before the day is over. But when I come in here, I'm, I'm, I'm declaring, see, out of my mouth come, the Bible said, out of your mouth come blessing and what else? So I'm, I'm, I'm blessing God and I'm cursing the works of the enemy. So I clean the path for myself and for the friendless. And then I got a little left for, for some folks on the front row. <laughs> and some days I got some for folks on the second and third row. Sometimes I got some time for everybody. But, but, but here's my thing. I'm not just, see, that's why when I come in and pray worship, I close my eyes are closed from the time I get to my seat because I'm doing, taking care of business. Yeah. I ain't playing. I ain't waiting. I'm, I ain't, I'm taking care of business. And that's why, that's why the devil has some of y'all come in late. Like, okay, when are they going to be done? When are they going to be done? Why we got to stand? You stand for everybody else. We stand for the king. See, that's the kingdom. See, that's the order. And so now by the time the word comes, I'm ready, man. That's why we do that. And in your prayer time, you need, don't just waltz up in there. God, you know what? I need one of these things. No. You come in there, Father. I bless you. I want to thank you for waking me up this morning. Closing me in my right mind. 
Yeah. Now you want to come with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for what? For whatever. Just because you can. And by the time you finish thanking him, man, that's some things just opening up. And now his presence is there. And now, now whatever you were worried about is gone now. And what, or whatever you worry about is like, you know, this ain't even, this ain't even big. This ain't even, this ain't even worth my worry. No, really. That's why you do that. It, it's, it's not some mental exercise. It is a spiritual exercise. That's why we do this. That's why we do this. And that's why we have it. See, see, it's nice and quiet now, right? Because truth is coming for. We don't want folk jumping all over the place while I'm talking. The church is the only institution that wants folk riled up when they impart information. You don't do that at school. What if you were at school, your professor, all right, uh, today we're going to study the out of the state of the and you over there, hey, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. You can't understand the, nothing the man is saying. He can't even, he can't even teach. You over there. <laughs> but in church, we want, we want folks to be all over the place. No, I want them quiet. I want them, <laughs> I want them quiet so we can get to Because we, we paved the way. We did all of that. So he said, seek for, he said, seek, seek to understand how the kingdom works. He said, seek to understand how the kingdom works. He said, make it, a, make it a priority of how the kingdom works. That's why this is, man, I got stuff down there. I mean, I got teachings in the bookstore, stuff down there. The teachings in the bookstore. And see, my whole, my whole ministry, what God called me to do is show people how. That's what I'm called to do. I can't do what that dude did. Well, he, yes, I can, but not like that. But I'm called to take this to, how to, show me how to make this work. And that's what the teaching for. That's why you need teaching. So, that's one thing. Now, there's two things we need, he said, that we're bringing to our life. And notice what he said. He said, they seek these things, but he said, if you do these two things, that stuff just comes into your life. You don't, you don't have to run after it. It just comes into your life. It, it, see, you first the kingdom of God hits right, and guess what? You'll be what? It'll be added. You don't go get it. It's added. What? Yeah. We got too many folks chasing stuff and chasing things, and God said, no, they're supposed to be chasing you. But it starts with I'm the righteousness of God. Watch this. Here's the second one. I'm just sure you already saw it. He said, seek first the kingdom of God, his laws, his principles, how things work. Then he said, and his righteousness. What? Yeah. And his righteousness. And his righteousness. The average person, the average person don't even understand what the righteousness of God is. And here Jesus said, seek it, and this is what unlocks your inheritance. Seek the way I do my order thing, the way things work in the kingdom, and then seek to know everything you can about this righteousness, this gift that God has given you, the stuff that you didn't earn. This gift. He said, understand it and, 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 and spend enough time with it. Well, first of all, see, first of all, I cannot, if I'm going to seek first, I got to give God's word priority in my life, and I got to give part of his word of righteousness priority in my life. I cannot know how the kingdom work or his righteousness if it's not a priority in my life. Right? So he said, go after this righteousness. Understand about this gift God gave you. Don't let the devil talk you out and put condemnation on your life because this gift wipes that out. Understand what this gift is. Understand how to walk in it. Understand that this gift is your ticket to the inheritance that God and Jesus, that Jesus left for you. I'm righteous. So now, now that I'm righteous, <laughs> I don't fear. Why? Because God said he'll never leave me. Because I'm righteous, I'm accepted. It doesn't matter what people, see, I don't know, I don't know, I don't, maybe you probably not like this, but there was a time in my life I was so concerned about what people thought about me. I was so insecure. I, I, was, I wanted people to think good about, I still do, but if they don't, I'm okay because I feel good about myself now. I like me. I spend a lot of time with me. I'm with me a lot. 
and I'm a pretty cool dude. <laughs> and no, I mean, that's important because, see, see, somebody can upset your day just by saying something. And if you don't know who you are, it will disrupt you. And then the devil will come in with seven more cousins. But I'm like, no, no, I know who I am. And so, and so because I'm the righteousness, now I'm confident. We had a guy we, we prayed for this morning. I'm confident when I pray for people, stuff happens. I'm confident that he can't just come in my house and just do what he wants to do. I'm confident. Wait, wait, brother, brother I can call for some stuff now. I brother got a breakthrough yesterday. Yeah, I can call for some stuff. I can stand on my porch and like, I, I dare you to come down my street now. That's how confident you can get in God. All your needs. He said, I supply all your needs. Physical, emotional, mental, uh, uh, material, whatever. You just call. When you know, God, dog, it, we can take communion in a minute. But when you know who you are, you know what you deserve. And then there's other people. You can go into situations and just change the atmosphere. Yeah. That's who he called us to be. Because of that gift of righteousness. It's a gift. So that means I'm right with God. Me and all my mess. But God made me right because I received Jesus. I believe unto righteousness. Let me do this now. I believed unto righteousness. I believed. Wasn't perfect. See, some of y'all... Still was like, well, I'm going to wait till I clean up myself, and then I'm going to come on in. You can't clean up yourself. You've been wanting to do that for a long time. You can't. I mean, you can't. You, well, I'll put it this way. You can stop doing stuff, but you can't clean up enough to come into the kingdom because it's not a physical thing. I think we're setting some people free today with this. So you and all your issues can come on into the kingdom now. What? You mean I can, I can keep smoking weed? <laughs> Who said that? Oh, you said that? Well, you smoke if you want to. I mean, I ain't, yeah, I, you know, I wouldn't. But, you know, because, because see, when you smoke weed, because I'm like, see, I went to that church. I visited that church. <laughs> I visited over there. And that man said, you can smoke weed. So I'm, I like that church. I'm going back. <laughs> I'm going right back to that church because you said I can smoke my weed. Well, you can. But here's what you do. Drugs. <laughs> drugs come under the heading of sorcery. If you look up the, the Hebrew and the Greek word, it, it's related to sorcery. I, I taught all this a long time ago. And so what sorcery does, alcohol too, the reason why it's bad is because it, it impairs your soul and then it gives the devil access to, to do whatever he wants to do when you're out there. And he'll, he'll take you wherever he wants to take you. And you can't make, you can't make righteous decisions while he, has a, while he has a grip on your soul. And if you do it long enough, you, your soul will be warped. So that's why it's bad. Because now, now not only did he have entry into, into your life, now he has entry into, you, into your, your the soul. Your, see, your, your soul is where, see, is where you have to renew. You have to renew your soul so that your soul can get connected to your spirit. And, your, and, and when your spirit and your soul agree, now living for God is a piece of cake. But if, you, but if you get impaired and, and you, you open yourself up to sorcery, you open yourself up to witches, witchcraft, demonic spirits, familiar spirits that chase your daddy, your uncle, everybody, and some other spirits, the folks you had sex with, now their spirit's all in there. Whew, we're going to take communion, ain't we? <laughs> all of that's in there. That's why when you open yourself up, that's why people, if, you know, most, most, Cults and witchcraft and all that, they always have something to get high on when they're doing their rituals. Did y'all have lunch yet? Oh, oh, okay, I won't say it. No, when I was in, when, the first time I went to Haiti, they, they, they took me, they took me to a place, well, you, uh, 
I don't want to say it. Huh? Well, they were crazy. Okay, don't y'all hold me responsible for this. But I'm going to show you how, how what happens when your mind is gone. They were digging up graves. And they would, they would dig up graves. And I know. I, Shonda. It's okay in Jesus' name. It's okay. But they would dig up graves. But see, they're out there smoking that, that stuff and, and drinking that stuff. And they dig up graves and with a straw sucking the warm blood. They were going... They were going right after people died, and after they bury them, because you know they, you know, they don't do like we do six feet down. They just put some dirt over them, so it's easy to get them out. And then they would suck the blood because they wanted warm blood. And then they, I ain't gonna tell you no more, but that's what was happening under under that stuff. See, you said, "Well, Pastor, I ain't gonna never do that." <laughs> Thank God, but but I'm telling you, when you connect like that out there you don't know you don't know what you do and I can tell you but I don't want to tell on myself because I want y'all to keep liking me <laughs> I'm saved now thank God how did I get up on that huh Smoking weed and being the king. Yeah, so you don't need to smoke no weed. <laughs> you don't need to smoke no weed. <laughs> so I'm collecting all weed pipes, crack pipes, <laughs> rolling papers. You can bring your dope up here tonight, today. How many of y'all plan on smoking weed tonight? Okay. How many think they're going to smoke some? How many want to want to smoke some? Look at y'all think I'm playing. I, play, I, I, I want you to, I want you, I don't want you, I don't want you caught up. I don't want you caught up. So, I don't know. I, I'm talking about something else. I, okay. Here's what I want to do. We're good. Brother, go ahead and get the, uh, the, the, uh, the bread and the water and the wine. <laughs> I remember, I'll tell you this while they're getting it. Um, I think the last time I was over there, and uh, they told me, they said, hey, Rev, you better, better watch out because uh, they pointed this guy out. They said he, he tried to put us cursed on, on, on the preach because I was going to preach. He's going he gonna, to he gonna come up to you, greet you, and shake your hand and stuff, and he's going to try to put a curse on you. I said, ain't nobody putting no curse on me. Ain't nobody putting no curse on me. You know why? I'm the righteousness of God. You can't, you can't, you can't curse what God has blessed. But, but if you don't know that, I can't enter into that inheritance. That's part of my inheritance. I can't be cursed. I can't fail. That part of my inheritance. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you're here, you say, Pastor, I'm, 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 you know, I know sometimes people are like, well, I, I can't go to, I don't take communion to other folk churches and all of that. And that's okay. You don't, you don't have to take it. That's fine. I understand that. Our feelings won't get hurt. Or if you say, Pastor, I, I ain't right. I ain't right with God. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, cause I heard my mom told me, don't you ever take communion when you ain't right with God. Uh, okay. But let me do this. Go ahead and grab one anyway. If you're not right with God. Because I'm going to give you a chance in just a minute before we take this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to wait till everybody. So if you're here tonight, man, I mean today, this is, this is good news. I said this is good news. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. And, you know, and, and the beauty of it is the power, to power to overcome and move past all of that stuff. It's not as hard as people think it is. It's about believing who you are.
Thank you, Jesus. Y'all gonna give me one? I need me some communion. <laughs> Thank you. Now this, I, I warn you, this wait for the little stale. <laughs> it was a little stale this morning. I'm like, ooh, lao. <laughs> we may have to get a loaf, start getting a fresh loaf of bread from the Europe, Europa, Europa bakery. I don't know if I can handle this much longer. <laughs> Amen. We was in that place. Where were we at? They had that real wine. I'm taking like, oh! Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Where was that at? That was in Haiti, wasn't it? That was, who else said that? That's where that was? Yeah, we were like, whoa! Shonda! <laughs> you know, if you had no wine in a while, you're like, whoa. Okay. Here's what I want to do before we, uh, before we, before we receive, because I want this to mean something to everyone in the house. Here's what I want to do. I want to, if you're here, I want you, you to receive the, the, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. It's a gift. You have to receive it. You can't earn it. Let's pray. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice today who has not received the abundance of grace or the gift and the gift of righteousness. You say whoever comes to you, you'll in no wise turn away. I pray now that not one person turns and rejects the invitation to have the power and the life of God living on the inside of them. Father, there are people in here that, that want everything we talked about because intuitively, intuitively they know that better is possible and they know that God is real. But for some reason, they've had issues receiving him. It's like an invisible barrier. You go so far and then the enemy rise up and all of a sudden, something, I got to do something. Something else comes to your mind, and you're like, no, I'm not going to do it. Some of you, before you got here, you said, man, I'm going to go get right with God. And you got here, and I start talking about this, and all of a sudden, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. That's a devil. That's a demon. That's an unclean spirit. And the Bible says that I give you power over all the works of the devil. So myself and most of us in here have power over that. We're going to exercise that power now, and you're going to be able to make that decision. So in the name of Jesus, every force of darkness that holds people back from doing what they need to do, you that's in this building or across the street, I, I, uh, I rebuke you. I command your stronghold to fall off of their minds. Every resistance to the gospel now is broken over their lives and they are free to obey God right now in the name of Jesus. You are totally free to make your decision, conscious decision, to receive him now, to believe on him now. You are free now. Nothing is holding you. Nothing is keeping you back. Nothing shall restrict you from coming in to your promised land right now. Joshua entered into a promised land. When you receive Jesus, you enter into a land full of promises. And there's promises to cover every area of your life. And it's yours to come into. But you have to receive. Now you're able to. I want every person to say, Pastor, I want to receive Jesus. I want to give my life to him once and for all. I want what you're talking about now. There's some things I didn't know I can overcome, but I, now I know. If I can just believe on him and get him to move inside of me, strength comes, power comes, the righteousness of God comes, and I'm ready to receive now. If I'm talking to you, I want you to raise your hand. I'm going to pray with you right there in your seat. Does anybody raise your hand up high? And say, Pastor, I want to. Okay, I see a lady over here. Thank you. See a young man over here. All right. Anybody else? Raise your hand up. 
God speaking to you, and you said, okay, young man over there, thank you. Okay, couple man over here, another man over here, thank you. You can put your hand down. Whoever you are, if you didn't raise your hand, this is, this is time for you. This is, this is serious business. I know you're serious. Now, if you hear you say, Pastor, I, I, I've received God, but I need some help breaking some stuff off of me. I just don't seem to, to get past that. I want to break some stuff off of me. And I want, I want, as we take communion, I want the power of God to break some stuff off of me. I'm, 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 I'm almost ashamed, and i got to get through this. You heard what you said about sin. That's exactly what's happening to me. I love God, but for somehow, some reason, I need some help, some reinforcement, breaking this stuff off of me. I want you to raise your hand. We're going to do that today. How many are in that situation? Okay. Young man in front of me. Thank you. See your hand over here. Okay. All right. We're going to get that off of you, man. And ma'am, you can do this. Glory to God. All right. Now, what we're going to do, let's pray for those in the first batch to receive Jesus. Whoever you are, if you raise your hand for that, we're all going to pray. And even if you didn't raise your hand, you can receive. If you believe it in your heart that Jesus died for you, that God raised him from the dead, if you believe that and you want him to move into your life, if you believe that, he'll do it right here. I'm going to lead you in a prayer and then I'm going to pray for you. Let's pray. Everyone, let's pray this together and as a support to those that are praying this. Say this with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you now to receive your son. Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. That you died for me so that I can become the righteousness of God. Thank you for being my substitute. Thank you for the exchange. And now I receive you and everything that you did. Thank you. By faith, I am now a new creature in all things have passed away. I believe that. Hallelujah. All right. Now let's, I'm going to pray for the other people in just a moment, but I want you to get your elements here. Glory to Jesus. The juice that represents the blood, the wafer that represents his body, we have the DNA of God on the inside of us. We're partakers of the divine nature of God. Hallelujah. Something supernatural took place in our lives. And I want to receive communion. Paul said, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I want you to break that which represents the body. And in Jesus' name, Father, we thank you that your body was broken so that ours can be completely whole. Thank you for the wisdom to take care of the temple. And we bless you with it now. And we receive our healing and our wholeness now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take it. On the same night, he took the cup which represented the blood in the same manner. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it. Do this in remembrance of me. This is where we remember that he suffered so that we can be whole. We remember that we didn't have a savior. We had no one in our life. He's the only one that can go before the mercy seat of God. 
And because he did that, he didn't do it because he needed to. The Bible said the soul that sins shall die. He died because somebody had to pay the price. We remember it was him. We sang a song, it's all about you, Jesus. And that's a song we sing every day. We should sing every day. Because of the life we live, it's all because of him. The life that we potentially can experience is because of him. The stuff that I'm so ashamed of and don't want anyone else to know, I can be free from that because of him. Lord, we thank you now that we have access into your presence because of the blood. We can come boldly to the throne, y'all, on our behalf and on behalf of others because of the blood. I want you to say this with me. Jesus, thank you. And let's partake of the cup. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Now, I want you, right where you are, whatever promise you're standing on, I don't care how long it's been taken, how long it's looked, and how impossible something is. The Bible said with God, nothing is ever impossible. We're with him. He never leaves us. I want you to begin to thank God for the manifestation of that promise right where you are. It, nobody else has to know about it, but just begin to thank him because the Bible said all the promises of God are yes and amen. Father, we thank you for your exceeding great and precious promises right now in the name of Jesus. You're so good. You're so faithful. You're so kind. Let's stand, everyone. Hallelujah. Now, I want the people that pray to, to receive the gift of righteousness. I want to show you. I got to, I got to get something in your hand to help you. Because I told you the two things to, to release that into your life. God has to become a priority. But then the word of God has to become a priority. That's how you find out about everything that he's done. And we, we have a little system we use to get people on track. So I'm going to ask every person that raised their hand um, to, well, I guess, I want you to leave where you bring your stuff with you. If you raise your hand to receive Christ, I tell you what, if you raise your hand on any one of those, I want you to come, but if you receive Christ, I'm going to ask you to go to our prayer room. We have some things we want to give you. This is really important. And if you don't do this, you'll, you'll, it, It'll cost you, not cost you physically, but you won't be able to advance like God wants you to. So I want all those that raise their hand to leave where you're standing and come up, and then I want to direct you to our prayer room. Let's encourage them, everybody. Come on. Come on, we can do a better encouragement than that. Let's do this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. All right. Now, whoa. I'm sorry, I should have said something. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll wait about another minute for the rest of the people. <laughs> Cause this is important. I, I really need you to do this because if you if you don't follow through, you you'll be right back in the same place and, and it won't you won't be able to manifest what God wants to do for your life. So if you, if you prayed the prayer, and I'm going to pray for those that, that say, I got to get this stuff off of me. I'm going to pray for those. How many of y'all come up here for that? Okay. All right. Okay. So the ones who prayed to receive Christ, don't stand there. I've been doing this for, I've been saved 33 years, 30, 32 years. I know what I'm talking about. I know it's tough, but don't allow yourself to be cheated out of what, God wants to do in your life. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. <clears throat> now, there were some other people, too. I want you to come on now. I, I wouldn't embarrass you. I really wouldn't do it. This is for your own good. This is for your own good. Because if you can't get past this moment, it's going to be hard to beat the other moments. Come on. All right, come on. Yeah. Okay. I'm 
gonna wait 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Listen, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I know what it takes. I know what it takes. And it, it takes, first of all, it take, took guts for you to raise your hand and to pray that. And standing here, this is how you get over people, what people think. You just go for it. So now, those that, there was some, I, the, the second prayer I said, okay, I want to pray for those who got some stuff. You said, I got, Pastor, I want to break this stuff. I got to break it. I love God, but I still haven't got past it, and I want to help you break it. I'm going to break it. Now, if you didn't come up here for that, I know some of you pray to receive salvation. I have some people that want to minister to you. You are free to go ahead and go to our prayer room. Who's going to lead? Deb, you going to lead them over there? Okay. All right. My wife right there. I want you to go with her. And those who just need prayer, I want you to stay. Now, how many of y'all need prayer and you need, you need, <laughs> you, you, you need everything? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So, I tell you what. After this, tell her to bring sing somebody out here because they're going to come back there too. Now, the Bible says, he, I give you power and authority over all the works of the enemy. I don't care what it is. I've seen so much that I, I, I've seen God do just about, I don't know, there's nothing I haven't seen him fix. I mean, from HIV, AIDS, to, to, to schizophrenia, to uh, God is good. Addiction, it don't matter. You don't have to tell me what it is. I just want you to receive when you feel my hand on you, okay? Okay? All right? Now, we're not embarrassed because if the truth be told, half the church will be up here. Because, <laughs> you know, we all, but I don't want to have church come, no, right now. All right. Father, I pray this morning before a lot of us were up. And you told me that you would show yourself strong in this place today. These people want help. They love you. But they just need a little extra help. That's my sister, that's my brother. And I thank you for the power to break everything and anything that's hindering them. They want help. So when I lay hands on them, I'm thanking you. Glory to God. I, yeah. I thank you for your power releasing them in Jesus' name. And then I declare they will stay free in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I break whatever's holding you. It, it, it ain't holding you no more. In the name of Jesus, break it. In the name of Jesus, you are free to go forth now. In the name of Jesus, every hindrance, my left hand, in the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. No more. The name of Jesus, be free forever. The name of Jesus, be free. The name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Man, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, be free. It's your time. Once and for all. I pray for you. The name of Jesus, be free. Once and for all. 
that everybody father because those of you standing here I want you to just stay in a moment of prayer a moment of, 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 of meditation because hallelujah this has nothing to do with how you feel it's a spiritual thing that is taking place in you and you are being made whole I need you to agree with it say this with me I am free forever in the name of Jesus amen thank you Father.